Support Wrestle Talk! Hello, I'm Adam from Wrestle Talk. I like board games and I have hair. Uh, all right, so Adam was unable to do the voiceover for the list this week, so instead you get me, Chopper Pete, your favorite presenter. Let's round up some news from the week, shall we? Because these are some of the news bits that might not have made their way into your news brains. Here's the news stories from this week that you might have missed. And while we're here, getting to know each other on a deep and meaningful level, why not go ahead and hit that subscribe button and enable notifications so we can do this again sometime. Number one, Kyle O'Reilly contract update. Poor Kyle. Earlier this year, it was completely feasible and even likely that he would be breaking out as the next top babyface in NXT, and now he's in a team with Von Wagner, which I think is the logical progression we all saw coming. Unsurprisingly, since former stablemates Adam Cole and Bobby Fish have both joined AEW and sort of reunited over there, and are in an interesting storyline, and, you know, not teaming with Von Wagner, fans were wondering if Cool Kyle would be following suit after his contract expired. Well, now we have an update courtesy of the wonderful Fightful Select, who are reporting that not only does Kyle's contract expire before the end of this month, but that WWE are very interested in keeping him in the company. Something that's very juicy, though, is that Kyle also reportedly passed on signing a new contract that was offered to him in late 2019 meaning he never actually re-signed. On top of this, the report also says that Kyle was actually surprised his contract was up so soon, as so many WWE contracts have time added to them because of injury or other reasons. However, unlike with Adam Cole, WWE were not caught off guard by this revelation, as they started paying a lot more attention to contracts following the whole Adam Cole's contract expiring and him heading over to AEW two weeks after his contract expired thing. I, for one, wouldn't complain about seeing an undisputed reunion in AEW. That would be what I would call extremely neato. And speaking of NXT contracts, number two, Johnny Gargano contract update. Another contract coming up soon is Johnny Gargano, who isn't teaming with Von Wagner right now, so good for him, I guess. Gargano reportedly signed a contract extension which would allow him to wrestle in NXT War Games, much like Adam Cole signed an extension allowing him to wrestle at TakeOver 36 earlier this year, and it had been previously reported that he was exploring all options before deciding what he wanted to do. And once again, Fightful Select has an update for us, saying that talks between Gargano and WWE about re-signing a contract began in October. According to the reports, WWE really want to keep Gargano around, praising his work with The Way and pointing out that he has helped progress a number of prospects during his time in NXT, regardless of if he stays or leaves. Fightful also reports that Gargano's wife Candice LeRae is set to stick around in NXT for a bit, as her contract is not due to expire imminently. According to the Wrestling Observer newsletter, her current deal ends in May 2022, but time is expected to be added to that due to her pregnancy. Number three, Karen Q question mark. Sticking with NXT, this is apparently a heavy NXT list episode for some reason. Whatever happened to Mei Ying after she did the fusion dance with Boa and became part of him or something that causes him pain? I think, and then sometimes he has face paint and sometimes he doesn't. I don't understand, nor do I care to. Well, the former Mei Ying is Karen Q, who actually was on this week's episode of NXT 2.0. And if you didn't spot her, well, you must have been sleeping on the job because she was sleeping on a couch for reasons? Why doesn't 2.0 ever explain anything? In a backstage segment with Indy Hartwell and Persia Parata, there she was, on a couch, in the background. She was not acknowledged, she was just there, sleeping. Can't wait to find out why. It was previously reported she had the new name of Wendy Chu, but that hasn't been seen on NXT yet because why would they say the name of the person featured in a backstage segment? Like that one time Von Wagner was on SmackDown. Never forget about it. It's the funniest WWE segment of the year. Number four, Walterifying. Walter, we know him, we love him. He's awesome and terrifying. You wanna know what's even more terrifying than, as Tempest calls him, a perfect wrestler. A perfect wrestler in even better shape. A photo recently surfaced of Walter post-workout in Austria, and Jesus Christ, the man could already chop a hole in someone's chest, and now he could chop the hole to make a second hole. The man is a beast. This is amidst rumors of his WWE status, as it was previously noted that he didn't want to move away from Europe and his wife and kids. Having now seemingly separated from his wife and begun dating NXT UK's Ginny, there are rumors he doesn't have that same desire to stay in Europe anymore, and WWE have reportedly been very keen to get him across the pond to America. Whatever Walter chooses to do, we'll hear it before we see it. 
Those chops are delightful. Number five, Seth Rollins' fan attack apparently shouldn't be scary. After last week's episode of Raw, where Seth Rollins was attacked on the ramp by a fan, that fan in particular, by the way, Seth described the incident as terrifying, though luckily the situation was dealt with swiftly by security and the man was escorted away. Man who has opinions, Ric Flair, has weighed in. Not on the fan attack, but about Seth calling it terrifying, because apparently that's a bad thing. Speaking on his Woo Nation Uncensored podcast, get a better name for that, Rick, he said, My problem with Seth is that if you're a top guy in this business and you know anything about the psychology of what the fans think and feel, which they really do, you never, ever, ever get off an airplane in LA and say, I was terrified. Terrified of what? Terrifying, Seth, is being in an airplane crash. Ah, yes, Rick, being terrified is reserved exclusively for just being in an airplane crash and can't be used to describe any other experiences. You're right, he continued. You were terrified or horrified by a wrestling fan? Come on, man. What I would have done if I was Seth, which everybody should learn from this, is that even though the referees had the guy, I would have jumped back on him, even if I never got a shot in. I know your answer is going to be, well, there's lawsuits and all that. WWE would have covered the lawsuit. Seth would have never got to them. Mm-hmm. Great idea, Rick. Jump on the man who's been restrained because kayfabe or something, brother. But if you are a heel, you never admit defeat. You just don't do it. Do you ever think I beat anybody? No, but in the minds of most people, I didn't lose because I kept lying about it even though it was a work. You never admit you got your ass kicked, much less being horrified or terrified. It's still real to him? Damn it. Apart from when this actually is real, like a fan attacking a wrestler, and I feel like that might supersede the kayfabe element of it. Maybe that's just me. Number six, Taya Valkyrie thinks WWE will sell soon. Can't get through a news video in 2021 without talking about at least one wrestler who's been released by WWE this year. There's so many of them. Taya Valkyrie, formerly going by Frankie Monet, has been outspoken following her release from WWE in November, who was followed by her husband, John Morrison, the week after. Of course, the reason given for all the releases was budget cuts, but the common fan speculation is that WWE is getting ready to sell up soon. What with them consolidating their entire company, shutting down various divisions, and releasing a whole bunch of people to cut down costs. So when the Fight account tweeted, where do you see WWE in five years, it was actually quite funny and also accurate that Taya Valkyrie responded with a simple sold. And despite that both Valkyrie and Morrison were released recently, many fans leapt onto this response calling her bitter and salty because the wrestling community is filled with really nice people. Valkyrie stood her ground calling out these responses and said that yes, she did dream of getting signed by WWE and her time there was disappointing and that she's going to continue to stand up for herself. Good for you, Taya. For what it's worth, I think she's right. WWE will totally be sold soon. Number seven, disappointing ticket sales for AEW and WWE. And speaking of not selling, there's been some disappointing ticket sales for AEW and WWE shows in the new year. This comes after there was some competition between WWE and AEW in the New York area for ticket sales with WWE struggling to shift seats. Now the struggle is on both companies because as of Monday the 29th of November, WWE had sold 2,040 tickets for the January 3rd episode of Raw in Greenville, South Carolina and 2,167 tickets for the Raw episode on January 17th in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Meanwhile, in AEW, they've sold 821 tickets in a pre-sale for the December 29th episode of Dynamite and Rampage taping, 2,680 tickets in a pre-sale for the Battle of the Belts episode in Charlotte, North Carolina, and 2,441 tickets for the Dynamite and Rampage taping on February 2nd in Chicago, Illinois. Dave Meltzer commented that it was very surprising that the Battle of the Belts was outselling the show in Chicago, as it's Chicago and has sold out incredibly fast in the past for AEW. It was also noted that these sales numbers were more of an issue for AEW than they were WWE, as AEW tends to sell more on pre-sales and early buys, whereas WWE drums up numbers closer to the time with local advertising. Number eight, the called championships, pal. It's been a long known fact that Vince McMahon doesn't like championship titles to be called belts. It's just a fact of life, like death and taxes. But why? Well, according to R-Truth, who's had more championship reigns than anyone else in WWE, WWE history, thanks 24-7 title, Vince McMahon thinks that a belt is something you use to keep your pants up, or if you're Captain Holt, it's a championship cummerbund. Number 9, Plain White Tees. If you've been paying attention to Brian Danielson's AEW run so far, you'll have noticed that he doesn't really have merch, which I would very much want to buy. He just wears his plain white t-shirts because he's a fashion icon, you see. Speaking on the casual conversations with the Classics podcast, Danielson revealed it's because he really loves the planet, the selfish so-and-so. I just want a Daniel
Danielson t-shirt, okay? So AEW came up with a very nice The American Dragon is Back t-shirt. I think one of the things that has confused their merchandising people, and also confused the WWE merchandising people, is that I don't want to sell people things, so it's a choice. It also makes my life simpler in the sense of I don't have to worry about what I'm going to wear to TV right now. Part of my service is this idea of how do we benefit the planet and all that kind of stuff. So it's like when you say consume less, it's like what about the people in the forest countries of the world? What about the bottom one billion? I'm not telling them to consume less, but I also don't want to be pushing people to consume more. I don't want to say, hey, buy my shirt, unless purchasing the shirt does more good than harm. How dare you be so nice, Danielson, caring about the environment and everything? What a heel. And number 10, Red Notice is the most watched Netflix movie ever. Yep, you heard that right. That rock movie, which had flawless integration in the form of Vince McMahon's golden egg at Survivor Series, is now the most watched movie in the history of Netflix. The movie reportedly had 328.8 million viewing hours in 18 hours after launch, compared to the previous record, which was Bird Box, which had 282 million hours which took four weeks. And you know what? I bet it was the egg that did it. That seven-figure deal to promote the movie with an egg on Survivor Series. Christ, wrestling is so stupid, isn't it? And that's the list. Thank you for checking it out, everyone. Really appreciate it. Press the videos for more listy content, and obviously, subscribe here and like, and do the YouTube things. Comment. You know the deal. Jam that jam, etc. Bye.